The goal is to prevent an air embolism. So if you're looking for a video on how to maintain a strict air-free system with your pressure bag, look no further because in this video, I'm gonna show you a live demo with focus on initial setup on how to prime your pressure bag without air bubbles so you can properly measure hemodynamic monitoring. But before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome, my name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. So we use pressure bags for hemodynamic monitoring, which is in an ICU or CCU setting. So some examples of hemodynamic monitoring include a system set up for measuring your CVP, which is also known as your central venous pressure. Normal range is typically anywhere between eight to 12 millimeters of mercury. And if it's too low, it's an indication of hypovolemia versus if it's too high, it's an indication for hypervolemia. So I always correlate the trends and treat appropriately based on the MD orders. Um, another example is for your traumas who need rapid blood transfusions for emergencies, RNs will utilize a pressure bag to get the blood in quick to save the life. Another example is your A-line, which is a continuous arterial blood pressure monitoring system. This is commonly used for when you're titrating vasoactive drips and need a continuous blood pressure at least like every 15 minutes. So the setup looks daunting, it can be overwhelming in the beginning as the focus for today's video will be on how to prime the tubing to prevent air bubbles. So this setup requires aseptic technique. So you will need cable IV tubing from your facility, a pressure cable to connect to the monitor, a pressure bag, the size will be printed on the bag indicating if it is 500 mils or a thousand mil bag, which are the two commonly used sizes. With that said, based on size, you'll need a 500 or a thousand mil bag normal saline. For this demo, I'll be using a 500 mil bag uh, with the pressure bag being 500 mils. Okay, so these are the parts of a pressure bag. This is a 500 milliliter bag. So this is the front of it. In the back, this is the mesh. And if you lift this up, this is where your normal saline bag will hang. And then you'll attach it to this hoop, which will hang on the IV pole. And then below this is your piston gauge. And I want you to really take a look at this because it's measured in millimeters of mercury. So in the white zone is 150 millimeters of mercury and 250 millimeters of mercury. And then the green zone for the adult population, this is where you want it um, at 300 millimeters of mercury. If you see red zone, that's caution and it's just exceeded the amount of air needed. So below that is your pressure bulb and then you have your stop cock. So if you want to maintain the pressure, you're gonna have it facing up. Right here, it's gonna angle up and you're gonna maintain that pressure. If you feel like you need to inflate it and put more air in, you're gonna move the stop cock to this position and then you're going to be able to squeeze the bag and then it'll be able to inflate. So it's giving that little air signal because it says caution, because I put too much air, so that's a nice little reminder there. And if I wanted to deflate it, I wanna make sure it is never connected to the patient. When I deflate it and point it down, you're gonna hear a gush of air coming out, being released, and the bag will deflate. So let's angle this down the stop clock. And the bag is deflated. Again, you never wanna have this attached to the patient. You wanna make sure that the stop cocks closest to the patient are not open to the patient because you don't want the air to go inside and cause an air embolism. If you don't know, ask for help. Okay, so once you have your IV pressure cable tubing and your 500 mil bag and your pressure bag, you're gonna remove this little red cap. You're gonna remove the plastic cap from your cable tubing. Then you're gonna spike it so once it's spiked, then you need to make sure you burp it. So you, all this air that's within here, you need to squeeze it out. Sometimes it might be a little messy. Make sure that you're squeezing it out and then you put it back in. And then you're gonna notice that all four corners of the bag have no air because all the air bubbles are out. Then you're going to put this in your pressure bag. So you're gonna put it inside the bag and then you're gonna loop it in. 
and then this is what's going to hang on your IV pole. And then you're also gonna prime the rest, the duration of the tubing. So once everything is primed, then you can actually start to inflate the bag. So you are going to move the stopcock to this position. And then you're gonna squeeze the ball. And it takes a while for it to inflate. And again, we're gonna wait for that green indicator to show. It's a little bit too much. Deflate it a little bit. There you go, you're in the green zone, then you're going to put the stopcock up and maintain it. And there you go. Don't forget to label the tubing and your IV solution with time, date, and your initials. And most importantly, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.